Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, we're checking out VRM thermal performance of a few high-end X570 motherboards from ASUS, ASRock, MSI, and Gigabyte, priced between $350 and $370 US. Now, before I jump into the test results, let's just quickly go over each motherboard, taking a look at the cooling, as well as the VRM layout and design. I'll start with the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master and MSI Meg X570 Ace Gaming, as I haven't looked at these boards yet. Then we'll once again quickly check out the ASRock X570 Phantom Gaming X and ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Hero. Those two boards were featured in my initial VRM thermal testing, but for those of you who missed it, I'll include an overview again so you don't have to go back and watch that video. But for those of you who have seen the first video, you can either skip to the results or just watch it again if you need a refresher. It's no secret that Gigabyte's Aorus Extreme is my favourite X570 motherboard, but priced at $700 US, it's not exactly something I recommend you rush out and buy. For that, the Aorus Master looks to be the go. It's another high quality X570 motherboard, but it forgoes all the extremeness that you're probably not going to need. It's also basically half the price at just $360, and when it comes to VRM performance, I don't expect it to be that far behind the Extreme model. You still get Infineon's high-end 16-phase digital PWM multi-phase controller, though this time the V-Core portion of the VRM packs just 12 phases. Not 14, just 12 if you can believe that. Seriously though, with a dozen IR3556 50 amp power stages, the master should have little trouble taking on either the 3900X or the upcoming 3950X. I should also note, because Gigabyte's using the same XDPE13 2G5C controller, there's no need for doublers here, so we have a native 12 phase VRM. So the VRM looks very solid, but what I really like about this board are those real proper finned heat sinks. They're very similar to what you'll find on the Extreme. The heat sinks feature a thick aluminium base, though interestingly Gigabyte hasn't connected the two banks of fins using a heat pipe, but that's likely because they don't need to. Also on the back side of the board, there's a really cool large heat spreader or backplate, whatever you'd like to call it. I prefer heat spreader in this instance as it is connected to the PCB using thermal pads behind the VRM components and therefore it acts more like a heat spreader. And this will help suck away any built up heat from the back side of the board. Anyway, the Aorus Master looks exceptionally good, but what about the MSI Meg X570 Ace Gaming? This is another really good looking X570 motherboard and at $370 US it creeps in at just under $400 which is quite good for a board of this caliber. I'm personally not really a fan of the gold highlights but overall yeah I think the board does look very good. Anyway this isn't a motherboard review. We are here for the VRM and MSI has taken a different approach to Gigabyte with their 12 phase vCore VRM. Like Gigabyte, MSI has created a 12 phase vCore VRM using a dozen power stages. However, they've gone for a much cheaper eight phase controller using doublers. So as was the case with the Godlike, they're once again using the IR35201 and actually they've used this controller for their entire lineup, including those horrible Gaming Edge, Gaming Plus and A Pro boards. The difference here being we have not only 12 phases, opposed to eight for those lower end boards, but we also get a dozen 60 amp power stages. This means by using a cheaper controller, when compared to Gigabyte, MSI has been able to include better power stages with half a dozen IR3599 phase doublers. So that could very well get MSI the win, but we might be let down by the heat sinks. Whereas we saw real finned heat sinks on the Aorus Master, the Ace Gaming uses two aluminium blocks with a few cutouts, and one of them is heavily obscured by a plastic shroud, so that's not particularly useful. They will work well enough, but they won't be anywhere near as efficient as what Gigabyte's using, and we'll take a look at that in a moment. Next up we have ASRock's most premium X570 motherboard, well with the exception of the Aqua which is still yet to come out, but right now their most premium board is the Gaming X. It comes in at $350 US and that makes it the cheapest board of this roundup. For the controller, ASRock uses the Intersil ISL69147, which isn't a very popular controller, and as far as I can tell, with the exception of ASRock, no one else is actually using this controller for their X570 boards. It's a 6 plus 1 controller, so the likely V-Core configurations would either be a native 6 phases or 12 phases using doublers, and ASRock has opted to use doublers with all 6 signals from the controller to deliver a 12 phase V-Core VRM. 
Each Intersil ISL 6617A phase doubler connects to a pair of Vichet SIC 634 50 amp power stages, so in total the board packs a dozen 50 amp power stages, which should be overkill even for the upcoming 3950X. As for cooling, ASRock has strapped on a pretty basic looking pair of aluminium heat sinks, which are connected by a single 6mm nickel plated copper heat pipe. The heat sinks are fixed into place using four screws which go through a back plate on the rear side of the board. Sadly though, the back plate doesn't actually do anything. It's not connected to the PCB using thermal pads, so it doesn't help suck away any built up heat on the back side of the board. Overall though, a solid looking X570 motherboard. Then finally, just quickly, we have the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Hero, and this is a $380 motherboard. For the VM controller, we have the ASP1405, and this has allowed ASUS to create a true eight-phase VRM without a doubling scheme. ASUS has gone with the IR355 power stages, which are 60 amp parts, and then we have 60 amp microfin alloy chokes. Again, they're using a slab of aluminium to cool the 8-phase V-Core VRM, pretty similar to what we see from ASRock and MSI. On paper, I'd say MSI and Gigabyte have ASUS beat, but ASUS is adamant that they have the best performing VRM with the lowest thermals, so it'll be interesting to see just how accurate that statement is. For the load testing, we're running Blender for an hour and all testing has been conducted on an open air test bed with no direct airflow. Normally I also test inside a case, but that is massively time consuming. And as I've said in the past, I'm saving all that fun work for when we have the 3950X. To record the temperature, I'm using a digital thermometer with K-type thermocouples, and I'm reporting the peak MOSFET and PCB backside temperature. For the MOSFETs, this means I'm measuring the temperature directly on top of the component, so between it and the thermal pad, and not an internal temperature, which is bound to be a little bit higher. Still, with all the boards tested under the exact same conditions, this should give us a pretty clear picture of how the VRMs compare thermally. And just finally, I'm not reporting delta T over ambient. Instead, I maintain a room temperature of between 21 and 22 degrees. And then I have a thermocouple sitting right next to the test system so I can monitor the room temperature at all times. First up, we have a sort of out of the box performance test with PBO plus auto OC enabled in the Ryzen Master software. Under these conditions, the ASUS Master provided the best result with a peak operating temperature of just 56 degrees. The onboard probe also reported a peak temperature of 55 degrees, and we monitored this readout using hardware info. So that's pretty consistent with our own findings. The ASUS Hero ran a few degrees hotter, but with a peak of just 59 degrees, the result was very acceptable. Though we did notice a five degree increase for the MOSFET surface temperature, and that's likely due to ASUS using inferior heat sinks. Next best was the MSI ACE, and I was a little bit disappointed with this board. Hitting 64 degrees certainly isn't a bad result, but given the VRM specs, I was hoping it would at least match the Hero. Again, real heat sinks would have really helped to this board, but as it stands in the no direct airflow test, a 65 degree peak temp is still very good. Then lastly, we have the ASRock Phantom Gaming X, which peaked at 68 degrees. Again, not amazing result here, as it ran 12 degrees hotter than the Aorus Master, but still acceptable and will work just fine with a 3900X or 3950X under these conditions. Now, this time I've manually overclocked the 3900X to 4.3 gigahertz using 1.4 volts. The Aorus Master is now peaking four degrees higher on the underside of the PCB, Though, interestingly, the onboard probe is reporting an 8 degree increase in temperature. I repositioned my K-type thermal probes a few times, but was only able to measure a peak of 60 degrees. Using the same test method, the ASUS Hero also peaked at 60 degrees, and we already know the onboard probe reports much lower temperatures on this board. So that means the Hero temperature only increased by a single degree when compared to the PBO test. The MSI ACE saw a three degree temperature increase, and as a result, the board now peaks at 67 degrees, making it seven degrees hotter than the Gigabyte and ASUS boards. Then finally, we have the Phantom Gaming X, which crept just over 70 degrees. Again, a good result given the conditions, but relatively poor compared to the competition. Here's a look at how all the X570 motherboards that I've managed to test so far compare. The Aorus Master and Crosshair 8 Hero really are class leading. Basically, in order to beat them, you have to spend twice as much on something like the Godlike or Aorus Extreme. The MSI Ace was decent, while the Phantom Gaming X was passable, as I said a moment ago. But with temperatures similar to the much cheaper ASUS Prime X570P, VRM thermal performance was a bit disappointing for a $350 motherboard. 
Then finally, the boards that exceeded 100 degrees in this test can be considered to be a bit too sketchy for use with the 3900X and 3950X. And given the MSI X570A Pro essentially failed this test by throttling, we highly recommend you avoid it. And really, boards like this don't deserve to don a flagship chipset. Okay, so I've now tested VRM thermal performance of 15 X570 motherboards, and we're starting to get a pretty good sense of how these 500 series boards stack up. Next week, I will add four more boards to the mix. They will be the 250-ish dollar uh, boards, and then we'll be getting pretty close to wrapping up the X570 testing. Today's testing though, covering the $350 to $370 price range really should answer the question that many of you have been asking me, and that is who makes the best performing sub $400 X570 motherboard? The answer is Gigabyte and Asus. The Aorus Master and Crosshair 8 Hero are really so close it doesn't matter which one of the two boards you pick. So the choice here really will come down to which board offers the features you need, along with a few other personal preferences, such as which BIOS do you prefer, and I suppose which board do you like the look of the most. I wouldn't completely rule out the MSI Ace. It may be competitively priced in your region, but I'm also not quite sure what it offers over the other two boards. It also only offers four SATA ports, which seems like a bit of an odd choice for a board in this price range. Here in Australia, the Ace is $40 cheaper than the Aorus Master, though given the relatively high asking price of both boards, that only equates to a 6% saving. The ASRock X570 Phantom Gaming X is 11% cheaper than the Aorus Master here in Australia, and in terms of features, you're not really missing out on anything. They both pack 2.5 gigabit LAN, for example, but you do get an additional two SATA ports with ASRock. So value-wise, the Phantom Gaming X is very good, and with some decent airflow across the board's VRM, it will run well within safe limits. In summary, there's no duds at this price range, and really when spending this much money, you'd bloody well hope you're getting something quality. My number one preference is the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master, if only for the fact that they're using real finned heat sinks, and we do need to see more of this, especially on lower end boards. I know they're more expensive to manufacture, but still, I'd rather see real finned heat sinks in favor of plastic IO covers and RGB lighting. And that's gonna do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like. And if you'd like to support the channel more directly, get some cool perks and all that stuff, then yeah, go check out our Patreon page. Our Patreons really are the lifeblood of this channel. And without them, we wouldn't be making this content because we don't really get our return on investment, but we know you guys really do enjoy it. Not many people do it, so that's why we take the time. Anyway, as always, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.